Welcome back, guys. <clears throat> Today I thought I'd kick off a new series on Linux Mint. I'm going to cover a variety of topics uh, that the new user would be concerned about if they're new to Linux or if they're just new to Linux Mint. Uh, Linux Mint is the number one distribution on DistroWatch, and it is the distribution that many, many, many people turn to when they want to leave Windows or Mac. So we're going to cover a variety of topics. In this first video, I'm going to go over the basic uh, half a dozen or so steps that uh, you should take once you have your Linux Mint installed and ready to fire up for the first time. So uh, beyond that, I'll do some configuration videos, theming, icons, uh, just uh, basics that the new user I think would like to have addressed and have a guide to work with as they become acclimated to their Linux distribution and to help them enjoy it a little bit more on a daily basis. So let's start with the first step. Okay, let's get started with the first uh, topic and that is updating your system. When you finish the install, you'll see in the bottom left, uh, I'm sorry, the bottom right in the system tray, you'll see a little icon and the first time you see it it'll have this little blue symbol in there you want to click on that and that'll bring up your update manager you want to check one of these configuration options the first one is don't break my computer recommended for novice users so it only selects updates which are known to be safe or do not impact critical parts of the operating system the next one Optimize stability and security recommended for most users. It only selects updates which are known to be safe or which do not impact parts, critical parts of the operating system, but also show me security and kernel updates. And then the last one is always update everything that's recommended for experienced users. So even though you may be a novice user, my suggestion would be to leave it right in the middle optimize stability and security recommended for most users so leave it right there the check mark is right there click OK now it's going to bring up a screen showing you updates the first thing you want to do you're gonna see a question asking you do you want to switch to a local mirror You'll want to click OK because the system will then do a speed check on all of the mirrors available and make a suggestion on which one you should use so that way your updates will be faster. So let's click on OK and enter our password. And so now it's going to bring up your software sources. Now this is where uh, Linux Mint will go to pull in packages for updates. It'll also make available pack, uh, packages that you might want to install in addition to what is installed out of the box. The first option here is your Linux Mint mirror. Click on that. It's going to start checking all of the mirrors that are available to you and rank them by speed. Now, of course, as with anything related to the internet, this can change over time. In most cases, I usually find that advanced hosters for my particular location on the east coast of the United States is the fastest. However, in this case, the speed check has determined that Team Simru, C-Y-M-R-U, has come out to be fastest. So I'm um, now it's not much faster than Linux Mint as you can see the 805 versus the 852. I usually have good luck with advanced hosters even though it's coming in at 640. I ran another check this morning and advanced hosters came out on top. So you can check the the one usually you're better off checking the fastest for you so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select the fastest and click the click apply 
Then I'm going to click my Ubuntu mirror list. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to do a speed check and come back with your fastest mirror. And then you can decide which one you want. I am going to, uh, for the sake of uh, expediency, I'm going to select the fastest one that I can see right now and click apply because it's a very long list and it takes quite a long time to finish analyzing all of them. So I'm going to take that fastest one, click apply, and then once you do that you want to update the cache. So click update cache in the top right. It's going to go and update the sources so that from this point on it will pull software from the mirrors that you selected. So now that is done you can close out that window and since it has two updates you're going to click on install updates. It's going to ask for your password and then it's going to stop pulling in uh, all of the packages that are requiring an update. Now as you can see once it did that initial update it identified all of the additional packages. As you can see there are multiple packages available. Now they're ranked according to a code number, a level. Because of how we set up the configuration, the update rules, originally um, it's not going to enable this kernel update because it's a level 5. It's only going to give you level 3's. You can see the upgrade is ticked off right here but it's not checked off on the level 5 because it's not recommending that you do the kernel update that is a level 5. So there is a little bit of risk associated with that package. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to update everything but that kernel. Now if you wanted to update the kernel all you have to do is put a check mark there and for this update cycle it will update the kernel. Now I can tell you that kernel 4.4 is a long-term support stable kernel and so you would not have a problem in most cases checking that off and doing that update. So I'm going to update that kernel along with all of the other packages. So let's click on install updates. It's going to ask for your password and it'll go through the update process. Now this is going to take a few minutes so I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back with you. Okay guys now you can see that the system is up to date. Uh, it did finish all of the updates. Now because I did a kernel update um, I would need to do a reboot so I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the system and I'll be right back with you. Okay guys welcome back I did reboot and I have my Wi-Fi configured as you can see by my uh, available Wi-Fi networks and I have my NVIDIA as you can see I'm running the 36757 driver so now I have my Wi-Fi and my NVIDIA running the next step in the process <clears throat> would be to install codecs now uh, codecs are required for your multimedia whether it be audio video and the easiest way to get the codecs that you need for your system would be to install a package called Ubuntu restricted extras. Now Linux Mint is based upon Ubuntu and so we're going to install that package. Ubuntu restricted extras. Now when you install packages you have a choice between using the command line or using the software installer. If I go to the software manager you will see that these same packages packages are available within the software manager. So if I do a search on 
I'm not sure if it'll come up on Codex. Yeah, so if I search for Codex, <clears throat> I've got Multimedia Codex installed, but I do need Ubuntu Restricted Extras. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click on Install. That does the same thing as using the command line. So I'll close the terminal, and we'll use the Software Center to install our Ubuntu Restricted Extras. Now they are installed. And that'll give you what you need uh, for your audio and video codecs. And let's go to the next step of the process, which is going to be the settings panel. Now, if you go to your menu, and this is called the whisker menu, if you go to your menu and click on this little uh, icon with the sliders, that'll open up your settings. I'm going to expand it so that we can see what's there, and we're going to go through a few of them, okay? All right, so appearance, I'm going to cover appearance in another video, but um, this is where your themes, your icons, your fonts, and your uh, settings are installed for your appearance. I'm going, to, I'm going to review that as a separate video. That's a topic unto itself. So within this particular panel we're gonna just do a few items we're gonna go to our screensaver you can use a random screensaver I usually kick it in after five minutes I don't like locking the screen and I would leave if you're gonna use the random screensaver just leave the defaults the way they are now <clears throat> For window manager tweaks, I only change a couple things. Actually, I, ch I, I change the placement for new windows. I move the slider all the way to large, and I leave at the center of the screen. I'm going to leave the compositing alone, but if you want to have a transparency to your windows, I would suggest you can leave everything alone just change the opacity of windows during move uh, and create a little bit of transparency by sliding it down and you'll see what that does you see how it creates some transparency when you're moving the window <clears throat> for workspaces I usually just use the one workspace you can set that according to your preferences uh, power manager I don't need notifications and again this is what I set it for you can set it to whatever you like I, I set it for never suspend I eliminate the lock screen I bring these all three down to never I don't want power management for the display being handled. I'm on a desktop, so I just leave it like that. And for devices, I'm leaving that alone. So I'm going to go back to all settings. The next important thing would be your firewall configuration. Enter your password. And all you do here, all I do, I leave the default settings and I just turn on the firewall. That's all I do. And I'm going to get into session and startup in another video. So that is about it for the settings panel. So guys, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover in this particular video. I'm going to do a, another video on um, appearance, themes, icons, fonts. I'm going to do a video on system tray utilities, and I'll do a video on, a co on con keys. And so uh, stay tuned. Watch for the additional videos. They'll be out within the next few days. Guys, thanks for stopping by the channel today. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you soon. Take care.